Tonight, we're looking into drug shortages across the United States. The FDA is now keeping track of low supplies for manufacturers. You may have heard about the Adderall shortage just a few weeks ago. Well, now you can add the list amoxicillin. It's a common antibiotic used for bacterial infections. And I want you to take a look at this closely. This is really the FDA's current list. It's long, 183 different drugs now in shortage. And you can see the list here is pretty extensive. Meanwhile, we're not going to name all of these, of course, because there are just so many, but we do want to tell you about a few that happened just this week. We mentioned, of course, amoxicillin, but more specifically, it's the oral powder suspension commonly prescribed to children. This is what they mix in the bottle at a low dose, and then they usually add a flavor. The next medicine that treats arthritis is called ketoprofen capsules. Also used for arthritis is called difluzinol. And finally, you've probably heard of this last drug that I just want to go to, and this one is for anesthesia. It's called propofol, and we could show you more, but again, the list is very, very long. 50 plus drugs now that were flagged just in the last week. So we wanted to know what's going on with these common drugs like amoxicillin. ABC Action News reporter Rebecca Petit goes in depth for us tonight, finding out if and how it's affecting the Bay Area. Amoxicillin is the most commonly prescribed antibiotic in the country, especially for children. And now the FDA is warning of a supply shortage with the liquid form of amoxicillin in shorter supply. It is commonly used for ear infections, pneumonias, sometimes urinary tract infections too. Manufacturers of amoxicillin say the shortage is partly due to an increase in demand. This comes at a time when pediatricians across the country are seeing a rise in RSV. Pediatrician Dr. David Berger tells me the respiratory virus is spiking among children at his Tampa practice. We've definitely had our cases of RSV. We've had a couple of babies who had to go to the ER, um, you know, because they can have the, the secondary respiratory problems. Dr. Berger tells me amoxicillin is not used to treat RSV. RSV or other viruses like the flu and COVID-19. However, he says kids with RSV may develop symptoms that appear to be bacterial infections or contract a secondary bacterial illness, which would lead doctors to prescribe amoxicillin. The limited supply means parents may have to try a few pharmacies to fill their child's prescriptions. Their other option, getting a prescription for an alternative antibiotic. Work with the pharmacist there or with their prescriber to find another pharmacy that might have the drug in stock. There may be a different concentration or dosage form that's available. But there's also several other options that can be used as far as antibiotics go. We wanted to know what this means locally for all of us. I called a handful of local pharmacies and they tell me they have not seen the impact of the shortage so far. Multiple manufacturers of amoxicillin are also citing scarcity of raw materials. There has been several pieces uh, in the international market preventing some of these raw, raw materials to come to the country for the production of those goods. Economists tell me if the shortage continues, consumers may have to pay more for amoxicillin and other prescribed drugs. Rebecca Petit, ABC Action News. Meanwhile, we reached out to several local hospitals to get their take. Sarasota Memorial tells us right now their amoxicillin supply is sufficient and the shortage is not impacting them. They say that's mostly because the suspension form is usually used in outpatient settings. Meantime, they're developing contingency plans in case the shortage becomes more long term. They're also working with community pharmacists to inform them of alternatives. John Hopkins All Children's Hospital told us they have enough supply right now, but they're closely monitoring the situation. And Moffitt Cancer Center says they don't use much amoxicillin, but their ability to order the drug has been restricted to just one bottle per week. HCA Largo says supply is not an issue right now. And as part of our commitment to taking action for you, we're also looking into solutions. Tonight, we spoke with leaders at USF's College of Pharmacy who tell us they're working on a program dedicated to making more of these medications right here in the United States. Dr. Kevin Sneet says that many of the name brand and generic drugs we use are actually produced in other parts of the world. If there are any manufacturing delays, any supply chain delays, any ingredient delays, 
uh, it kind of backs up and you wake up one day and you have uh, very massive medication shortages that we're experiencing with many medications right now across the country. Academic centers like ours here and uh, training and teaching people to go in and create the brand new types of manufacturing facilities of tomorrow. And I don't think it will take as long as people might think. And I know this was a lot of information we've thrown at you. So we compiled it all in the in-depth section of our website and you can find it by going to abcactionnews.com.